What's up? Today, I'm going to be going over the math we actually use in the structural engineering building design industry. I'll be going over the math that you'll learn at school or university and whether or not you'll use them once you enter the structural engineering industry. Then I'll reveal what I think is the most important technical skill to have in the structural engineering industry, even more important than knowing the math. Then I'll get into how we actually use math in the industry. Let's get started. First off, what math are you going to be expected to learn in college or university? And are you going to be using them in your structural engineering career? Let's answer those real quick. Algebra? Yes. Know it. You'll be using it. Trigonometry? Yep. Geometry? Oh yeah. What about calculus? You're going to need to learn it. You're going to need to understand it, but you're not going to be doing derivatives all the time or by hand. What about linear algebra and differential equations? Same thing. You're going to need to learn it during school, but in the industry, you're rarely going to be using these. You'll rarely be performing these calcs by hand. What about vector statics? Hell yes, dude. You absolutely need to know vector statics. You will be using this day in, day out in your structural engineering career. Vector dynamics? If you're an earthquake country, Yes, you do need to understand vector dynamics. You probably won't be doing these calculations by hand, but a lot of the software uses it, so it's good to know. Statistics? It's more of a good to know. A lot of the code books and their test data use statistics to come up with you know, their equations and their data points, so it's good to know in the, the back of your head. But you probably won't be using it directly. What about in grad school? What math did you use in grad school? In grad school, I was doing differential equations by hand. I was doing vectors. I was doing tensors. I was doing integrals all day. I was doing those all day. And it was depressing because I knew uh, since I wanted to get into the consulting design industry, I probably wasn't going to be using those that much. What about finite element analysis or FEM? I did take a finite element analysis class and it was good to know, especially with uh, the structural engineering software we use in the industry today. It's good to have at least a background in what this, what the finite element uh, method is and its strengths and weaknesses. Don't really need to know the calculations or know how to do it by hand, but it's good to know in the back of your head. Now, I know that's a lot of math to learn and it can be intimidating, especially if you don't love math or are good at math. For me, I was pretty average and math wasn't that interesting to me. I didn't know why I was learning it and I even failed a couple classes like in this video. It wasn't until that I knew I wanted to do structural engineering in my career and that's when I really got engaged and that's when I was ready to really uh, learn the math needed. For me, it was what math do I need to learn in order to design and engineer structures. Once I had that goal, once I knew what I wanted to do, math was just something that I just needed to get out of the way and learn and understand and it was going to help me design buildings. Uh, was it easy for me? No, relearning all of those math subjects and getting better at them took a lot of extra time out of the classroom. For example, I was pretty behind in grad school and I spent a lot of time relearning all of the mathematical courses that I just went over. And for some of those classes, I just wasn't meshing with how the professor taught the class and I had to do a lot of self study. For example, I'd look up multiple books on how to do it, books that simplified the subject, videos on the internet, anything to help me understand the subject better. Nowadays, if you were looking to brush up on your math skills, I'd tell you to use Brilliant, who I'd like to thank for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a website and app built off the principles of active problem solving, which I'm a big fan of because I'm a visual learner myself and I learn best by doing. For example, I would struggle with derivatives when I was first learning them. The professor would just write a bunch of numbers and symbols on the chalkboard and tell me the derivative is the slope of a tangent line at a point. Uh, what? If I had Brilliant back then, I would have taken their calculus in a nutshell course where I could see, visualize, and interact with the derivative in a practical problem. They have a lot of other interactive math classes as well. So if you'd like to try out Brilliant for free and get 20% off a year of learning, click the link in the description below or visit brilliant.org slash mattpicardle. Now let's get into what I think is the most valuable technical skill in your structural engineering career, more important than the math itself. So the dirty secret in the structural engineering industry is we actually don't do a lot of math. By hand, at least. Back in grad school, derivatives, tensors, vectors, integrals, I do those by hand all day. If you ask me to do a integral now or find a derivative of something, I might struggle. I just use a simple calculator and this is all I need to do simple calculations. For more 
complicated structures and analysis, we use structural engineering software. So if you don't need math that much, what do you need to succeed in the structural engineering industry? The answer is knowing how structures behave. That's the most important skill that you need to have as a structural engineer. The behavior of materials such as strength of materials classes, your statics classes, your dynamics classes, knowing the strengths and weaknesses of each of those materials, knowing how structures are going to behave during wind and seismic events, and knowing the design philosophies behind the building codes. All those things encompass knowing how structures behave, structural behavior. So why is knowing structural behavior more important than math? Let me tell you the truth that young structural engineers need to hear. Stop asking questions on what structural engineering software that you should be using. It doesn't matter. You're an engineer, you'll figure it out. Your job as a structural engineer is not to input data into a software or model buildings in your FEM software. It's part of your job, but it's not the most important part. That's not why you went to school for years. Your job as a structural engineer is to answer the question, how do you know the software is outputting acceptable and safe results? You as a structural engineer are the last line of defense for faulty software errors. You're taking responsibility for making sure that that building is designed safely. That's your responsibility that no one else can do. That's why you went to school. You're making sure all the people that use that building, that live in that building are safe. And this is why knowing structural behavior is more important than knowing how to actually calculate the math. The software does that for you. You're going to be using your knowledge of structural behavior to back check, to verify that the software is actually giving you the right results. What it essentially comes down to is knowing what the answer is before the software gives you the answer. Let's go into some examples. Here's an example of a long span steel beam. How's it going to fail? I'm going to expect it to fail in deflection. Looking at the deflection equation, you can see that the length of the beam is exponentially affecting the deflection. So even before I input this beam into a software or a program, I'm already expecting that it should be giving me some deflection problems. If it's not, instant red flags. What is going on here? In your 3D structural analysis models where you're simulating earthquakes, is your model meshed together properly when you're shaking it or you're wiggling it? For a concrete slab, you should already know where the reinforcing is going to be. For example, doing a moment diagram over a concrete slab you should know that there's going to be top reinforcement for the negative moment over the columns and bottom reinforcement at mid-span for the positive moment if the software is giving you something else and again red flag something is wrong or why is it giving me results that I'm not expecting? Is it a unique condition that I haven't looked at? If you're new in the industry and you're using software that you might not be too familiar with, always ask yourself, how do I know this is right? How do I back check the results? Is the structure behaving how I anticipate? Like the worst thing you can say to your senior engineer when they ask you, how do you know the software is right? The worst thing that you can say is um, the software, just spit that out. <laughs> Try to never respond like that. Try to have some understanding because uh, you're not a technician, you're an engineer. You should know uh, somewhat what's going on and how to back check your work. What if you're in the boat of, oh, that's why I went into structural engineering. I love math. You're saying I'm never gonna be using any of these? If you are one of those engineers that really likes math, all hope is not lost. In structural engineering, there are career paths that allow you to use those. The most straightforward one is going into research. If you go into research, maybe at a university or academia, I know a lot of their testing, you'll be using a lot of that in your papers and your thesis, I'm sure. Or you can even go into research in the structural engineering industry. That's a more specialized career path, but those do exist. For example, there might be a company that does specialty structures or structural engineering vendors that test their own products and they need researchers to work on testing. If you wanna learn more about the structural engineering career path, I made a video on that as well, and I'll link it up here and in the description below. And hey, if you made it this far into the video, I wanna thank you. If you wanna help support the channel for free, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's free and it tells the YouTube algorithm to show these videos to more structural engineering students and professionals. So I really appreciate the support. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.